My name is Wes Evans with uh, Truck Humanities Community College. I'm an instructor here um, that runs the HVAC program. And today's video is going to explain the importance of the sequence of operation. Right now what we've done was is we've went ahead and have pre-put a fault in the furnace to give you a demonstration of the importance of knowing the sequence of operation of a furnace. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put a call and show, if I can get you to show the blink code. And we have a blink code of 1, and that represents a soft lockout. Okay, And what would we do here to fix this? As a technician comes up to troubleshoot this, they will be able to look at that blink code, right? And as they look at that blink code, through the inspection glass here, when they do that, hopefully they'll understand the importance of not just coming up to a furnace and taking it off, taking off the door panel, excuse me, and going right to the uh, inspection glass and counting your blink code. Once you recognize that and you see that uh, we have a one as our blink code, then we'll go from there to troubleshoot. However, we don't know what a one represents as far as a soft lockout. That could be a few things. This is where the importance of understanding the sequence of operation comes to hand. What I'm going to go ahead and do is, is I'm going to go ahead and kill power. I'm going to kill, we've uh, manufactured a switch in here to get rid of the door switch for you techni technicians that are watching this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply power. The furnace is going to kick on. Induced draft motor is what you hear. The induced draft motor. quiet. <laughs> Very quiet. And as you can see, we hear the igniter. That's an electronic spark ignition. Nothing. And from there, the technician should understand that something's not right. Obviously with the blank code, we're going to, we'll, uh, We'll notice that the blink code's not actually lighting or uh, blinking at this point because you've re you've re uh, introduced power. So I'm going to go ahead and cut power. I'm going to fix the problem. And with that, <clears throat> with that, now I'm going to show you the uh, importance and go over the sequence of operation. Your normal operation would be just this. We have a call for heat via the thermostat. Okay, Our induced draft motor is going to kick on. Our pressure switch is going to sense the pressure. Thus, then we'll have fire, which our electronic spark ignition is going to uh, fire up. Then we should have gas. Thus, then we should have our burner kick on. And then... Depending on the type of furnace that you're working on, your indoor blower motor will kick on. This particular furnace that we're working on today is a Ream 80% gas-fired furnace. So I'm going to go ahead and let's listen to the sequence of operation. I have a call for heat, induced draft motor. You probably won't be able to hear the pressure switch click. Once it does click, Our igniter and our burners, and then at a preset time, our indoor blower motor is going to come on. But in the process, we also have what we call a flame sensor that sends a signal to tell us that we do have flame. And once that's uh, recognized, we will actually start the process. And there, if you didn't hear that, that's our indoor blower motor. Now. Instead of talking over the blower motor, 
heat exchanger doesn't get too hot, I'm going to go ahead and cycle it off and let it cool off. Now, that wasn't a normal, that was a normal fire. Now, what's really nice is, is that if you don't, if, for the new technicians that are out there that aren't able to truly understand how to troubleshoot, let me get this the right way there, there we go, and how to troubleshoot uh, a schematic, but they're learning, so they're, they're green in the process here. What's really nice is, is the importance of, again, understanding how to troubleshoot via the sequence of operation. So with that, I'm gonna kill the power. I believe it's cool enough. This is a, a lab equipment. Um, the importance of the blink codes, okay? That's what's, one of the nice features of the furnace is the blink code. And on this particular furnace, we have five blink codes. Number one being a soft lockout. Now, if you remember, that was the first one that we had done. And the way to troubleshoot or go back to find the problem was to actually go back, reset the power, and watch the sequence of operation and actually see where it fails. And then from there, you can start diagnosing the problem. The second uh, blink code would be a pressure switch. And uh, the number two on this particular uh, furnace, uh, pressure switch remains open. Um, how that or what would, uh, what would cause that would be uh, possibly a faulty tube, which would be here. Um, and the fault on the tube would be uh, of age. It would dry rot and be cracked, um, plugged. Also, the flue vent here, which is your uh, flue, uh, flue gas, and it could be plugged. And what it does is uh, it recognizes the, uh, the lack of pressure there that's created by the induced draft motor, thus trips your pressure switch, okay? Um, some of the other things that I've found out in the field is that the actual uh, hook up here where the pressure switch goes into the, the uh, induced draft uh, motor housing uh, has actually been plugged up in there too. So with that said, that's your issues there, and that's where you would lead yourself to, uh, uh, to troubleshoot. Your other, uh, your other uh, blink code is number three, and on this one it's a limit switch. Now your limit switches um, are located uh, depending on uh, the size of the unit or the burners. Here we have one directly over the flame here, and we would know them as either a rollout, okay? The, uh, uh, notice actually, let me take that, and if you really look, there's a little red button on top of that, and in your schematic, it will tell you that that's a manual reset. That manual reset is uh, uh, done by pushing down on it. The other limit, which is here, is your main, um, which is identified also on the schematic. And then another one, because of the size of this furnace, is an HALC limit. With those limits, which that one stands for heat assisted limit control. Okay, and that would give you a, a three blink code. Your other blink code, uh, number four, is a pressure switch remains uh, closed. With that, you typically would have uh, a faulty. Uh, we find that the switch itself is a uh, fault. And then the last one, uh, which is a blink code of five, is your twinning. Um, twinning means that you, you have a a structure and you can find right here there's your twinning and those are your dip switches and typically we find that uh, either the switching is is off or uh, not program not programmed but they're not uh, located in the right setting with a blink code of five on the twinning uh, let's go back to twinning in itself for uh, understanding if we have a structure that uh, exceeds the BTU size that you can uh, uh, buy at your wholesale house you could actually put two furnaces together, uh, sharing the same ductwork, and set your twinning to match, and that way use a single thermostat, uh, but increase your BTUs by adding another furnace. However, let's uh, let's get back over here to the uh, sequence of operation. What I'd like to do is is just show you some of the trouble uh, codes that uh, uh, that you'll see. Um, the first one I'd like to introduce is a pressure switch, and I'm just going to pull the tube off to initiate. Um, our first uh, problem just to give you an example of what happens now again the induced draft motor kicks on alright you had a call for heat induced draft motor and then the next thing is, is 
um, your pressure switch is uh, sensed. And if it doesn't, then we won't uh, start the next phase of the sequence of operation, which is uh, fire, which would be either a hot surface igniter or a electronic start, uh, ignition. So we'll give it a second here, see what happens. Now the process is is, is kind of lengthy. Um, it's it's kind of hard to uh, to speed the process up. I uh, kind of have to be a little bit patient on this right here. Okay, here we go. Now, if I can get you to go up and look at the LED lights up here, you'll see that you have a, a blink code of two, one, two, and then from there, what the technician would do is is simply look onto the schematic verify that the uh, blinks uh, match uh, the description or just verify that a, a blink code of that which is two would be a pressure switch. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hook that back up. I also had mentioned, and I'm going uh, to kill power to clear the board, but um, I've also mentioned the three, which is a, a limit. Now, what I'll end up doing is, is I'll go up to the rollout, and I'm going to go ahead and manually trip it. And you should have heard that click. Now, what's unique about this, especially the IFC board, is the IFC board it really helps the technician troubleshoot this. So with that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and put it on a call for heat. Notice that right off the bat, induced draft motor kicks on but the indoor blower motor kicks on and I automatically have a blink code of three. Okay, a really, uh, a really nice feature. Um, one, little bit of, uh, one little bit of advice is, is that whenever there is a, a, a limit problem, uh, you're off on main limit or high limit uh, or an HAC, whichever the case may be, a rollout, your fan comes on. So as a technician is walking up to a, a job or a service call, with that, then um, they recognize that the indoor blower motor is coming on. However, with that, we also know that we want to check our blink codes. Now, um, the other one is the pressure switch remains open, which is a four, which it's pretty hard at this pretty demonstration to uh, to simulate that. I could pull the wire off. I think we're getting the logist of everything. What I would like to do is um, pull. If I can pull that flame sensor, I'm uh, I'm getting to the point where if I pull this flame sensor, now here, one, two, three, I didn't clear, I went too fast. What had happened was is uh, I went too fast on my trouble uh, my troubleshooting and I acted without clearing it. I'm actually going to have to kill power. Um, with that, and I don't even get my big mitts in here without getting this. I'm going to go ahead and I'll fire that bad boy. sure we're on. Oh my. Oh. There we go. There. I forgot to reset the limit. Kind of all a little nervous making this video. I'm not usually on TV every day. <laughs> so anyway I pulled to uh, I pulled to knock out the flame sensor. And just to show you what's going to happen with the flame sensor being uh, uh, faulty is would be the uh, um, the problem. We have the induced draft motor. Igniter, flame.
Notice it shuts off right away, okay? And as a technician would uh, recognize that sequence of operation, with it shutting off, from there, that should lead you to the flame sensor, okay? I'm going to go ahead and kill power right there. I'm going to hook up. I have one more that I would like to show you, and it simulates the same thing. Oh, let me get my... if they would have had a little bit more room. This next one I'm going to uh, simulate is reverse polarity. Now we don't, we don't see this a lot anymore. I know we used to, but with the, I, uh, with the IFC, um, we actually seen it a little bit more back in the day when we had uh, the, the introduction of IFC, as I would say it. Um, let's see, here we are. And this is one of the ones I, I do to my students because it's a mess in here. And uh, no offense to any one of my students, but sometimes they just don't pay attention. So it's easy to come in here. And if I just kind of do something like that, um, they don't recognize it right away. However, if I'm looking for the, the sequence of operation here, notice I've tripped it. Now, with that, um, obviously I've gotten in here a little bit too close. So... I'll have to actually get that to reset, which shouldn't be a problem. And I'm going to trade that up here, put that back on, and then before you set that, hold on a second, give me a second. And if you can still hear me, I have. Okay, now setting that back. Let's see if we trip again and we got power. And here now we have the induced draft motor kicking on. And I'm sorry you can't hear the pressure switch. Most of the times uh, when you're standing right here doing it, you can hear the switch click. We'll give it a second and watch what happens here. Okay, we have our, our spark fired up, um, our burner is gone, or going, excuse me, I notice it quit right away. Now, what's going to happen, and just to save time, that's the same, uh, it's the same scenario that you get with uh, the flame sensor, however, if you're, uh, if you're paying attention, you would actually be able to troubleshoot that. And with all that information, that is... Uh, you know, that's to show you the importance of the sequence of operation to help you guys troubleshoot. Uh, I hope you have understand it, and uh, that uh, that's all for now. Thanks.